What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another Fantasy Puck video. It's Chris and today I'm going to be bringing you guys my top 20 defensemen in tiers. All right, guys, let's get right into the video. The exact same format as the last one where it's default Yahoo scoring, except no plus minus, and we added blocks. These are defensemen, and these are the only ones that primarily have high block totals, so that's going to be very important in this list. Um, so let's be sure to keep an eye on that, but let's get right into the list, guys. Starting us off is Kale McCarr of the Colorado Avalanche. Shouldn't be any surprise here. He's the only defenseman that's really a lock for over a point a game, and I believe he has a 100-point upside again this season. Uh, like, definitely, like, the number one D that should be off the board in every single circumstance. I don't think we've seen the signature McCarr season yet. Uh, there's just so much that I like about him. He plays on one of the best teams in the National Hockey League. He's incredibly talented. He scores more than any defenseman in terms of goals. He's a lock for my number one D. Up next, guys, we have Roman Yossi, and this guy is just as much of a unicorn as Brady Kachuk. He's the only defenseman that can even touch the 300 shot range, and the only reason why he didn't the year before was because he got injured. 269 shots last year 281 shots the year before I still think he's got more in him I'm not worried at all about Nashville look what Eric Carlson did on a subpar San Jose Sharks team I think Yossi just gets the green light this year just similar to what Carlson had last year I think he's a lock for 65 points I wouldn't be worried about the injuries as well too he's usually pretty durable outside of last season he's only missed 11 games since the 2018-2019 season but he is 33 years old guys I, I just I love everything about him he's an absolute must draft for me rounding out our S tier guys we have Raspis Dahlin of the Buffalo Sabres we finally saw the big breakout season where he played over 25 minutes a night he's got good shot volume finally hit over that 200 shot range and he's great in terms of hits and blocks as well too that puts him uh, above all of the guys in A because of how well rounded he is peripherals wise he should be good for another 70 points but I think there's legit point per game upside in this guy as well too he's only 23 years of age very durable as a player has all the talent in the world especially with buffalo just getting better every single season i love this guy Starting off our A tier guys, we have Dougie Hamilton of the New Jersey Devils. We got to see how good this guy is when he plays a full year. Uh, he's the only guy that can come close to Yossi's shot volume and that makes him incredibly unique. His rest of the peripherals like his hits and his blocks are below average, but he's elite when it comes to shots on goal and goals. There's so much upside in New Jersey. I love him in the spot that he's in. Would we honestly be surprised if this guy put up 85 points just based off the way that New Jersey's looking this season? There's a little bit more... Uh, injury concern than the rest of the guys in this a tier and i believe that luke hughes is the real deal and could snatch that power play one spot if we do see dougie hamilton get injured but for right now he's the absolute lock number one defenseman there in new jersey and i'm expecting another big year out of him love the shot volume love the point totals love the opportunity that's why he's an a tier up next is Miro Heiskanen, another guy that we were really high on last season. And guys, if, if Pete DeBoer can do anything, it's unlock defenseman. Uh, I like he's just he's done it so much in his past. Heiskanen just like absolutely took the reins this year with no competition whatsoever. He's great on the power play. His shot numbers are good now too. That he's the guy in Dallas. Uh, doesn't hit as much as you think, but will get you around 100 blocks. I think there's another 75 point year incoming he could even hit in that 80 point range but i like him for 75 plus points up next guys is adam fox finishing off our a tier he gets bumped down to b for sure if you don't count blocks in your leagues uh, but he's he's just so consistent and you've shown it over the past two seasons. I thought he could potentially be over a point a game or close to a point a game guy. I believe he's that talented, but he's just so good in real life defensively that I think it slightly takes away from his offensive upside. Uh, he's, show, he's shown you what he is at this point, guys. He's good for 10 goals, 60 assists, 150 shots, 30 power play points, 125 blocks. I think he's got a very, very, very high floor because of this, and he's very durable as well. I just don't think the ceiling is as high as, say, guys like Heiskanen or Dougie right now just because of the way that he plays in real life. 
Starting off our B tier, guys, we have Eric Carlson. Again, doesn't have a picture yet in his Pittsburgh Penguins jersey, so just bear with me on that. Uh, I wanted to rate him high enough because of the 100-point season, but there's just so many red flags for me, guys. I'm just very unsure of the situation. He's typically injury-prone, and he's now 33 years of age. I'm, I'm absolutely shocked he played a full 82 last season, and you got to remember that he had the green light and sacrificed every element of defense just to be able to put up those point totals last year I think the talent is there absolutely especially if he can stay healthy um but did we forget that Chris Letang still exists on this team guys I think he's Carlson is the clear-cut power play one defenseman but Letang should still eat into his five on five minutes uh I think if he can surpass the injury history and stay healthy he's good for at least 70 75 points and he jumps to a tier but I personally don't think it's going to happen just based off the history and the fact that like I said he's now 33 years of age so I'm staying off him this year, but that's why I have him in the B tier. Up next is Quinn Hughes. And again, might get a little bit of slack for this because he doesn't do much, but he's elite when it comes to power play points and assists. He's basically the same player as Adam Fox without the double digit goal totals and blocks. So that definitely bumps him down a little bit. I wish the shot volume was there. Unfortunately, it's not. But there is only a handful of defensemen that can score more in terms of points than Quinn Hughes can and I like I think in terms of upside he's still one of the best players on this list he could hit close to that point per game total uh, but it's just the fact that like he lacks in other categories like shots like hits like blocks even but he is elite in two categories and like I said like there's not many defensemen that can reach the point totals that he can that's why I have him in the B tier up next guys we have my boy and another guy we're high on again this season Mort Sider he had 42 points in his slump season which that's not like 42 points is pretty solid for a defenseman I don't think we've seen the breakout season yet offensively that I think he has in him his floor is absolutely insane if you look at his peripherals like the guy is just a monster on the ice very durable as well too goes out and crushes people at every single game I think like there is 60 plus point upside in this guy we haven't seen it yet but Detroit is starting to trend upward especially bringing in guys with more talent like Debrinkat. I think he's the clear cut power play one guy there as well, too. Um, but it's just the fact that, again, he hasn't really shown this breakout season yet. But in terms of his peripherals and the fact that he's a lock for 40 points, I have him in the B tier. I think he's a very, very, very solid option. And I think you can run him as a power, as your number one defenseman, especially in leagues that count blocks and hits. Uh, I absolutely love this guy. Up next, we have a guy that Mike is super high on this season, Mikhail Sergachev. He finally got handed that number one role last year where he saw a big increase in his time on ice. Uh, Mike's all in on this guy, and I would be too, honestly, if we know for sure that he's the number one guy there now. I think that we're, we're kind of jumping the gun a little bit in terms of Hedman. Um... But I'm really excited for him. He was power play won the majority of the stretch down towards the end of the year. I love his floor as well too. Um, but I'm doubting the ceiling in terms of point production a little bit. I need to be able to see it again in order for for me to say, yes, Sergachev can hit above that 65 point range. Uh, I'm confident that, like I said, I really like his floor, especially in terms of his peripherals. Um, but he should be around that 150 mark in each of those categories, shots, hits, and blocks. Uh, I still think there's a possibility that Hedman gets back his spot in power play one. But you got to ask yourself, who is more durable going down the stretch, Sergachev or Hedman? my vote goes to Sergeyev on that I really like his positioning going into next year and if he's the number one guy in Tampa which we believe that he is I'm just I'm just there with Mike too like I'm all in on this guy up next, guys, we have John Carlson. Did everybody forget about this guy? Like, you got to, like, last year was a freak accident. His injury, he he got a puck to the head. It fractured his skull, which put him out for the year. Um, again, freak accident that he can't control. If you look at his injury history, he's very durable. He's only missed nine games in the three prior seasons. This guy should be a lock for 70 points. Incredibly talented offensive defenseman. And he gets you, like, around 
or potentially even over sometimes 100 blocks. Um, but the biggest thing to remember is he's 34. Washington look doesn't look as uh, talented offensively as some of the rest of the Eastern Conference teams, but Ovi still seems to be firing. I think this guy is an absolute uh, must pick just given where his ADP is. I love him this year. Mike loves him this year, and I'm excited for another 70, potentially even more point season. All right, guys, up next is Evan Bouchard of the Edmonton Oilers. The breakout season is coming. I feel like I'm I'm in Game of Thrones right now, and, and instead of me saying winter is coming, it's the Bouchard breakout is coming. Uh, he's got no competition now for power play one. I would be absolutely shocked if he's below a 60 point total this year. There's a legit case to have him in the A tier just based off what we saw in playoffs and the opportunity that's in front of him playing on this elite Edmonton power play. I think he's going to be good for over 200 shots and 100 blocks, which, you know, again, like that's great peripherals on top of that as well, too. And who knows how many power play points this guy's going to be able to get if he plays up top in between McDavid and Drew. Dreisaitl. I think there's a legit chance he can get a close to 80 or even maybe over depending on how things go and he's durable on top of that guys. I, the only reason why I'm rating him here is because he hasn't broken the 50 point mark yet and again like yeah he had a good playoff in Edmonton but it's the fact that we haven't seen him do it over the course of a full season yet that's why he's in the B tier with legitimate chance to jump to the A tier. Up next guys I have Vince Dunn of the Seattle Kraken and he's coming in at like defenseman 2 and 3 value. Everyone wanted to see the breakout and this guy's potential when he was finally given that number one power play one role. And now all of a sudden people are just kind of off of him. He's got absolutely no competition for power play one guys. I would I would love this guy a lot more if he shot, if his shot volume wasn't as low, but he should have another 60 point season and hundred hits. I don't know if I'd have him as my D one, but I think that like he's good enough in terms of his, his point totals uh, that we should see something similar to last season. Moving on to the C tier, guys, I have Victor Hedman of the Tampa Bay Lightning. It feels so wrong putting this guy here, but it, it's it's too soon to count him out as the number one guy, I think. I still think he has a great floor in terms of his shots and his blocks. He also scored 85 points the year before, but you got to remember he's now 33 years old. He should be good for another 50 points, but I think there's still some upside there. The only reason why I'm rating him here is because I'm going based off the fact that Sergachev is the number one guy. I think this guy's still another great pick. Uh, the only thing that I'm worried about is if he loses that power play one role, he, his point total probably drops to where it was this season, which is around the 50 point range. And that's why I have guys like Dunn and Bouchard and Carlson above him. But I think, again, we're counting him out a little bit too soon. Maybe not having a deep playoff run for once this year will give this guy the rest that he needs and allow his body to recover. And then he will establish himself as the once dominant defenseman that we count, we came to know. Up next, I have Darnell Nurse. This guy gives you pretty much everything you want out of a defenseman. And the next two players I should arguably have higher in the list is just tough because of their point totals. He can go a lot higher in some drafts, and I see, I've see i seen him go higher in drafts because of that 200 shot and over 150 block and hit peripherals, which is just insane. He should get you around 40 points as well, too. He is elite in terms of his peripheral ability, guys, but he's on the lower end in terms of his power play points and assists compared to some of the other guys in this tier. And so, like, I don't think he'll ever have the ceiling as the guys in the B tier. I don't think he'll ever outproduce Hedman in terms of his point totals. But this guy's basically more Cider. It's just his ceiling is Cider's floor, which is why Cider is in the B tier. And again, like, he's just, he's so elite when it comes to three categories, especially the combination of all three. But the rest is just kind of on the lower end. That's why I have him in C. I, I do, however, love drafting guys like this. Same thing with Jacob Truba, guys. This guy is Mr. 200. 200 shots, 200 hits, 200 blocks. He's got better peripherals, I'd argue, than Darnell Nurse. But unfortunately, he will not get close to that 40-point total. I, I expect him to be anywhere within like the 35 range based on what we saw. I know he was at 39 points the year before, but with the immersion of Ke'Andre Miller, he basically has no power play upside whatsoever. I don't think he'll be on power play two unless the Rangers decide to run two defensemen, 
but I think with Truba, he's just, he's so good when it comes to his peripherals. Like I said, I love drafting guys like this. They go sneakily under the radar. Um, in plus minus leagues, like they're both solid as well too. But when it comes to counting shots, hits, and blocks in one league, these guys are elite. I love them. They just don't ever get those point totals. That's why they can't be like a number one defenseman on my team. But I do love drafting these kind of players. Up next, Charlie McAvoy, another guy that is much better in real life than I would say he is in fantasy. He's great in terms of his point totals. Don't get me wrong. He should be anywhere above that 55 point, even the 60 point range. But the problem is that he's just slightly above average in everything else. Um, his blocks are, are definitely good, but everything else just seems underwhelming. You got to remember that Boston didn't get better this offseason. They got worse, and I don't think it should affect his power play totals, which I honestly expected to be higher than what they were. But I do think that he could see a little dip in production. That's why I have him where he is. Again, a much better guy in real life and one of the more elite defensemen in the National Hockey League for sure. He's just not that great in fantasy. Up next, guys, I have Brent Burns, and this might seem a little bit low for him, especially what we saw last season with 61 points. Burns pretty much has an elite shot volume around that 250 shot range, which is elite for defensemen, but he doesn't really give you much else. The production is good, yes, don't get me wrong, but he saw a big dip in his minutes dropping from 26 to 23. I would rather honestly take a guy like McAvoy that will get me around a similar point total, even if that means I'm giving up 100 shots just to get more peripherals in the blocks and hits category, which Burns just doesn't really do. I think he's a solid D option. The one thing that I am worried about with Burns, and this is probably why I rated him lower than guys like McAvoy, is I am a little bit worried about the D'Angelo deployment. I, I, I'm not 100% convinced that Tony D'Angelo is going to be the power play one defenseman, but whenever he's on a team, we typically see him in that role. So I am a little bit worried about Burns. I don't, I'm not 100% sold on him yet, and I could potentially bump Burns up a couple spots here. Uh, if that's the case that he is the number one defenseman in Carolina, I'm just a little bit hesitant on that right now. So I'm playing it pretty safe. Uh, I, I don't know if he'll hit that 60 point total again, but he should again be elite in terms of his shot volume. Finishing up our C tier guys, we have Noah Dobson of the New York Islanders. I would absolutely love if this guy was just played on a better offensive team. I hate the fact that he's stuck on the Islanders. I absolutely loved him last season. I thought his point totals were honestly going to get higher, but it, it seems that he's just limited in terms of, you know, the guys around him. Not to say that, like, Matthew Barzell is bad or, or bringing in Bo Horvat is a bad thing. It's just we know the Islanders can't score, and it's tough being a defenseman uh, and being able to move the puck to, to forwards and them not being able to finish. But he's a very, very safe option as a power play one defenseman. That's an important thing to remember as well, too, guys. He is the number one guy there in the in New York now. He should be around that 50-point range. I like him a lot more than the other guys in that 50-point range. Guys like Petro, guys like Theodore. Um, just because of the fact that his shot volume is a lot higher. Uh, he still gets a good amount of blocks as well, too, guys. But I, I, I would have him a lot higher if, like I said... Uh, he does have that breakout season. He's still very young, so I think there's still some ceiling left in him potentially. He's just got to show it to me. Otherwise, he's a great pick for a 50-point 50 range, 50 range defenseman with a high shot volume. And guys, this might come as a surprise to you, but in the D tier, I have Zach Warinsky of the Columbus Blue Jackets. I could have went with other safer options here. I could have even gone like Montour or Morrissey, but I feel like those guys are more... They just had like an outlier one-year wonder season. Uh, and Ekblad I could have put here as well too, but Ekblad is hurt again going into next season. And he already has an extensive injury history. Um, so I have Zach Rinsky here, even though, you know, he also has an extensive uh, injury history. I like him a lot. I really do. He has a high shot volume whenever he plays. Again, you could pair that with a power play one defenseman, and that's that's great, guys. Like, I, I think he can hit 60 points if he stays healthy. That's the key caveat is can he stay healthy? We haven't seen him yet deployed on the power play with a guy like Johnny Goudreau. Just that's why I have him at D is because I like his upside the most out of all the other options. And, like, I could have gone with a safe uh, option like Petro, but I think that, like, the thing that sets Vorinsky apart from Petro is the fact that 
Vegas just loves to roll their power play. They don't really have a true power play one defenseman. He and Theodore kind of like split a lot of the time. And Wierenski is the number one guy there. So I'm big on Wierenski this year, along with some of the other FP members. That's going to do for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below where I went wrong in this tier list. Do you think Wierenski is a legit uh, um, potential for a top 20 defenseman? Who would you have higher? Who would you have lower? Did I mess up any of the tiers? Uh, I'm, I'm sure I'll get some some uh, comments. It's, it, defenseman is very hard because like you can value things like points over things like peripherals, or you can do it vice versa where you value peripherals over points. So I'm very curious to see what you guys think. Leave a like and hit that subscribe button. We got a couple more tiers videos coming to you before the start of September. And once September hits, guys, we're going to have a massive output of videos and content for you guys, including a bunch coming to our Schwartz channels as well too, like TikTok here on YouTube and Instagram as well too, guys. So be sure to follow all those socials if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more content. I will see you guys in the next video. Have yourselves a fantastic rest of the day.